Hello, I'm Wendy Neal, and I'm a proud member of the European SharePoint community. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an issue tracking list that is user-friendly and personalized for your end users. Before we begin, let's quickly review what it means for a website to be considered usable or user-friendly. In its simplest terms, usability refers to how easily a user can understand and use your site. Whenever I talk about usability, I like to mention this great book on web usability by Steve Krug called Don't Make Me Think. And its premise is just that. Your users should not have to think about anything when they're on your site. It should be obvious and self-explanatory what it is that they need to do. And the more things that your users encounter that make them stop and think, well, that can just lead to a lot of frustration. Now let's take a look at the standard out-of-the-box issues list in SharePoint. What exactly is wrong with it? Well, nothing is really wrong with it per se. I mean, it works just fine. You can submit new issues to the list. You can view and edit issues, assign ownership, even get notified if an issue is assigned to you. But is the experience of submitting and keeping track of your issues as user-friendly as it could be? Let's see for ourselves. So to save time, I've already created an issues list and added some issues to it. I just used the issues list template. And one thing I want you to note is that the main audience that we're concerned with here is our end users. So they will be using the issues tracking list to enter issues that the IT department needs to fix. So pretending to be an end user, let's submit a new issue. So I'm gonna click on new item First thing to note is I'm a bit overwhelmed. There are so many fields on this page. I'm not even sure. I'll, I'll give it a title. My boy, I don't know who to assign it to. I don't even know who's all in the IT department. Uh, I'm guessing the status, well, it's not resolved or closed, so I suppose I should leave that. Well, I think this is a pretty high priority, so I'm gonna set that. You can add additional details here. The category, okay. What are these related issues? I don't even know. Comments, due date. I mean, I want it to be right now, today, and I'm gonna save it. So the next thing to note is that once I save it, it takes me back to this big list, which isn't sorted or grouped in any meaningful way. It's just a bunch of data, and it's not really easy to see which items I submitted. So there's definitely some things we could do to improve the usability of our solution. So we've seen that some improvements can be made to the user experience. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a simplified entry form that only shows three fields. We're going to create a dashboard page with personalization. So we'll have areas that list out all the open issues and resolved issues, as well as tickets that I've submitted. And finally, we'll redirect our users to our dashboard page after submission instead of the standard SharePoint list page. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is create a simplified entry form. We're going to hide the fields that your users don't need to see. We're going to do this using SharePoint Designer. So I've opened my site and I'm going to click on Lists and Libraries and I'm going to click on my issues list. You'll notice about halfway down in the right hand column, there's a form area. Any list is going to have a display form, an edit form, and a new form. Now I've added a fourth form here when I was creating my demo environment. We'll walk through creating a new one so you can see how I did that. So you want to click on new and I'm just going to make this new. And we want to make sure that this is a new item form because this is going to be used to add new items to the list. We'll click OK. We see our form here has been created. So I'm just going to click on that. So in order to modify the page, we need to open it in advanced mode. So we'll just click the advanced mode button. And now my page is editable. Um, unfortunately, the design view doesn't work in SharePoint 2013. So you'll need to know a little bit of HTML in order to do this. So we're looking for the part of the code where our fields are displayed. So here's our title field. Here's our assigned to field, our issue status, priority, and so on. We want to delete some of the fields that we don't want to see here. So title, we definitely want to keep that. Now, one thing to note, all of these fields, there's several lines of code that make up the display name and, and the actual field that displays. And those are all wrapped in these TR tags. So 
So I want to delete this assigned to field. So I'm going to highlight this entire block and just delete that. I'm going to do the same with if your status and priorities. We'll keep the description. We'll keep the category there too in case they know it, but we'll get rid of this related issues. We'll get rid of the comments. That's supposed to be used by IT folks to update the ticket status and we'll get rid of due date as well. So now we're just left with our category, description, and title field. Now I'm not going to save this. Like I said, I've already got a form created. So what that means is that when I go back to my list and if I click on new item and set the default form now, it opens that form and you can see here I've only got a title, description, and a category field. So that's a much more simplified form. The users are going to be much more receptive about filling that out. The second thing I want to show you is how to create a dashboard page to uh, more easily organize and show more relevant information to the user. So let's go into site contents. I've already created my page. Um, I created in the site pages library. My page is called issue tracking. So I'm going to open that up so you can see it. So let's look at the page. We've got uh, a big button up here. So we just put an image here to add a little color to the page. We've got an open issues section. So these are all of the issues that are still open. And then these are all of our resolved and closed issues. And then on the right over here, we've got a web part called My Submitted Tickets. So this is where the personalization comes in. The user can see, oh, these are my tickets that I've submitted. And I can see at a glance which ones have been resolved, which ones are still open. Let's go into edit mode here. So all three of these web parts here are just dropping the list on the page and they're all just using different views. So for example, this one, the open issues is just using the active issues view. And then same with the resolved and closed, it's, it's using the resolved and closed issues. And then my submitted tickets is using a view that just shows the tickets that I've submitted. Right, if you want to see how I created the button, it's just a hyperlink on the page. If you go into the uh, source, you can see that I just put some styling around it to give it a border, a background. Let's get out of edit mode, save it. Okay, so let's actually submit a ticket here. So if I click on submit ticket, again, it's going to open my default form. Enter an issue. The description, put it in the category, and save it. Now, if you noticed here, this time when I saved it, it brought me back to my dashboard page. So how did I do that? So if I go into my issues list and I'm going to click on new item, what I'm going to do is I want to copy the URL that it uses and I'm going to paste it into WordPad here so you can see it. All right, we really don't need this group folder here. That, that doesn't really do anything. What I want to point out is a source parameter here. And let's just highlight that. So SharePoint's got a source query string parameter that if you pass a URL to it, that's going to be the redirect URL. So in other words, whenever you're done filling out a form, whatever URL is after the source parameter is going to redirect to it. Now that URL looks a little bit funny because it's got all these word characters in it. Well, it's just URL encoded. To figure out how you would encode the actual URL that you want, because if you look closely at this one, you'll see this one's going to the all items page. I'm going to replace that with my URL, but I need to encode it first. I just Googled URL encoder, and, and this is one of the top tools that came up. There's probably a ton out there. I've already got in here. This is just the URL to my dashboard page. Remember the page I created? I, I had named it issue tracking. So I've got that in there and I'm just going to say encode. And now you can see it puts all those funny characters there. So we're going to just copy this now and go back to my WordPad. And I'm going to replace, highlight that in the control V to paste my new. So now this has got my issue tracking.astx page. It's going to redirect to that. So when I created my dashboard page, that is the URL that I put in here. If I go back to edit mode, 
click here and I go into my link properties, that's the URL that I pasted in here. So in review, SharePoint is incredibly versatile and powerful. You can build just about anything, but it's not always the most user-friendly out of the box. You'll want to think about your audience and the process flow when you're designing pages or sites. Who is going to be using it? What steps do they need to take? What information do they need to see and what don't they need to see? Lots of questions you should answer before you begin. And lastly, you can improve the usability of your solutions in just a few easy steps. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Wendy Neal and thanks for watching.